All right, DocuSign, you guys ready? Everybody's favorite topic. Ready. No? Okay. <laughs> Just me? Fine. Um, let me log in. So let me ask, since I have a few people here, I want to find out from each of you. Um, there's the basis of DocuSign. Let me go from command into DocuSign. How do you go in DocuSign to like get into the envelopes and send things for signature? Then there's the, what I call DocuSign 2.0, which is like, all right, I get all that, but how do I manipulate documents? How do I, um, if I have something signed already, make corrections to a document, right? So let me find out from everybody here. Um, I'll just call it DocuSign 1.0 and DocuSign 2.0. Where are we? What do we want? Two. I think it's between one and 1.5. <laughs> one and 1.5. All right. Do I hear 1.6? No? Okay. All right. So what we're going to do is we are going to, um, all right. Oops. Just do one of these. Come on, shrink down. There we go. And there's my little zoom bar. Things always in the way. All right. Let's dive in. And I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna lay the I'm gonna lay the the story. Okay, we have already we have a client. We have already gone into command, add them as a contact, put them in opportunities, gone from opportunities into DocuSign. Is everybody familiar with how to do that? We also have a great video on how to do that. We have an amazing resource page, kwlresources.com. Uh, that walks through videos and screenshots of how to do exactly what I just said. Because you have to start a command to get to DocuSign to start your room. So we've already taken that step. We're in 2.0 today, or 1.5 today. Um, once you start the room, once you go from command to DocuSign and start the room, you don't have to go back through command because the room already exists, your folder, right? Room is a folder. So you can go directly to DocuSign.com. When you do, this screen shows up. Okay. So what you're going to do to get to rooms is up here. Okay, so I just went to DocuSign.com and I signed in. And right here, I'm going to switch to my rooms. Well, I would have everybody. I just go to rooms and then bookmark that, and then you never have to do that again. So like go to this page, do say bookmark, Put it on your toolbar and then you never have to go back to so this is my natural laptop that'd be great so what kirsten's saying is there's a way to bookmark the rooms so it automatically comes up as the rooms as opposed to the other page um maybe we could do a quick loom video or zoom video like a quick recording video and we can show people how to do that um for everybody who we can put that in the resource page yeah I guess it would be different if you're using Chrome versus. Chrome. Although everybody should be using Chrome because yeah. everything else okay. just so stinks. So it's like if you're in Chrome, here's what you do. If you're using something else, go to Chrome. Okay. <laughs> All right. So there will be a video on how you can bookmark the rooms page because I don't even know how to do that. So I'm going to watch Kirsten's well, video and learn how as well. Do it. I don't know how to bookmark. I don't know I don't how to. Do that. Think that I know how. Yeah, We're going to figure that out. I mean, I know how to bookmark. I was going to do this. Bookmark it. Yeah. Okay, let's see if that works. All right, so we are in the rooms right now, and you have a bunch of different folders. Okay. So, again, I'm kind of fast forwarding this DocuSign because um, all of you have been with Calloway's for a little bit and have gone through how to get here, right? Am I yes, no? Yes, okay. So I'm gonna go into my playroom. All right, now here's where I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop for a second. I'm gonna talk about the importance of a playroom. Okay, the importance of, of sample rooms, test rooms, playrooms. So let me ask everybody, why do you want that? Why do you want a buyer playroom, a listing playroom? A... Practice. Say it again. Practice. Why is that important? Practice. 
practice makes you uh, perfect. Practice makes it permanent. You'll never be perfect. Practice makes it permanent. Proper practice. Practice, proper, well, say that 10 times fast. Thank you. Say that 10 times fast. Proper practice makes you perfect. Yes. <laughs> Only say it once. Um, Prepares you for when you're actually ready to submit. Prepares no, you. Oh, geez, I'm loving this. Prepares you for when you're for when you are ready to submit. Why is it so important to be prepared, especially when it comes to putting offers together, DocuSign contracts, all that? Time is of the essence. Time is of the essence. Yes. So. Let's give you two scenarios. I'm going to call this scenario, I'm going to call this agent A and agent B. And at the end of these two scenarios, I want each of you to tell me which agent you are not want to be, but are going to be. Okay. So is agent A. Here's agent A right here. Okay. Agent A sits in all these trainings watches videos, looks at DocuSign, sees DocuSign, comes to classes, leads classes, does other things. Then all of a sudden, fast forward a week, two weeks, three weeks, a month, two months later, they have their first buyer or listing Melly's buyer. And they're like, oh my God, this buyer wants to, they're showing house to the buyers like, I want to put an offer. And agent A has never actually Practice, prepare, play, any other people you want to put in there. Right? How do you think Agent A is feeling right now? Hyper stressed. Hyper stressed, overwhelmed. Right? Now, granted, we're here to help you. We're going to navigate. We're not going to do it for you, but you're going to feel stressed. There's going to be a lot of videos. You're going to have to move a lot faster. Right? And you'll probably take about three, four hours to do the contract to get it out to your buyer for signature. Blah, blah, blah. But it, as, if it's prior to 8 p.m., you're going to want to do that that same day, which means you're dropping everything to do that. Okay. Order pizza for the kids. You need to get this contract out. And if it's after 8 p.m., call the station and get it the next day. All right. That's Agent A. Agent B. Agent B has gone into DocuSign and Command, and they have a, a you know, Alana HK buyer. We can buy a house, I'm not really, right? Uh, they have Playroom buyer, they have Bob the buyer, they have Fred Flintstone the buyer, they got Joe the Lister, they got uh, George Jetson the buyer, I don't know why I always go cartoons. They got Mickey Mouse the listing. <laughs> Right, Donald Duck the listing. They're probably buying like three houses and their, their dad buying five. So they have like 10 playrooms in here. They've done one a day, one a day, or well, whatever, two days a day. They now have a real person. How's this person feel? How's this agent feel? They have to get an offer out today. Confident. Confident. A little less stressed. Do you think that they'll probably need three, four hours to go through? Or do you think they'll probably move a little bit faster? A little bit faster. All right. So which agent are you going to be? A or B? B. B? B. 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 Okay. So when I see all of you in a week from now, and I get to say, hey, pull up your DocuSign, show me your playrooms. You can even name them playrooms. Fire one playroom, fire two playroom. Okay. I can't stress that enough. Cannot stress that enough. I, I, like a broken record. All right, let's dive in. So we're in DocuSign. Now, a few things to really point out here. We're in the room itself. We got the details, the documents, the envelope, right? The details section here is so crucial. And even experienced people in DocuSign keep forgetting 
the detail section, and they're doing so many things manually, which is taking more time. So what you really want to make sure you do is edit this detail section, right? And if you're working with a list, if you're working with this, um, if this is a listing, you're going to put in the seller one, seller two, et cetera. If you're working with a buyer, you're going in here, you're putting in the address, right? Now you're not going to have all the information, right? What's their earnest money to amount? Do they have any contingencies? Who's buyer one, who's buyer two, et cetera. You fill in all the blanks that you have information for. Now let me give you a best practice. If all of you, when all of you make phone calls today to lead generate, notice how I said when, like that. When all of you lead generate today, and let's say all of you land a brand new buyer today, you connect with the lender to get pre-approved to start showing houses with this week. What is something you could do this week or even today? What is something you could do? You have a buyer, okay? So Kirsten just landed a brand new buyer, Shank, who's talking to the lender today and they're gonna set up showings for tomorrow. So what should Kirsten be doing right now? The exclusive agreement. Okay, yes, I love that. So to send him, now I typically will like to print that out and bring it to the appointment, but that's a whole buyer training class with DocuSign right now, not buyer training, but yes. Kirsten should go in and start a room. Just because you start a room doesn't mean they're making an offer today. You as an agent can prepare. You know you're going to help this person and you know they're going to be writing an offer, right? So while you're setting them up, go in here and start the room. You won't have the address yet because they haven't chosen a house yet, but leave that blank. You can come back and edit. Okay. All right. So you fill out the details section. Make sure you click save once you fill all the information in. So let me just scroll down here. Let me put in, oops, let me put in a buyer agent and we put in, oh, I already have a save. Great. I have buyer one and buyer two. Save. All right. Now we're going to go ahead. We're going to move over to documents. Now, some documents will automatically populate in here for you. These, just so you know, the back end of it, these are actually things that are manually built uh, by myself and Doug, our broker, um, in the system saying you went from a command to a room in DocuSign, and it will automatically pull over certain documents. Um, you will see this change on occasion. So don't be afraid if one day you get in here and there's like four, another day you're like, oh my God, there's seven. That's us playing with the system and adding more. So we're going to add documents. Now, here's the thing. There's two types of documents you add to this. DocuSign forms that you need to fill in and then PDFs. Obviously, the PDFs are what you're getting from the, uh, the listing agent. What we're going to do right now is I'm going to pull over a PDF. Show you how to manipulate it. Ooh, where am I going here? Um, where is my desktop? Here we go. Um, I'm just going to pull over a random PDF. I don't know what these are, but this will be fun. We'll go with this one. I don't know why I just pulled over, but we'll find out. All right. So we have all of our documents in here. Obviously, when you need more documents, go to add, DocuSign forms. Just so you know, you have the counties. The difference between um, packets and library is packets are things that are built in the back end for you. Library is everything that DocuSign personally puts in there for us. So if you can, if you're always, uh, if you're looking for a form, somebody text me over the weekend or yeah, text me over the weekend was like, hey, I can't find the escalation form. Go to MAR. Maryland Association of Realtors will have almost everything. Type in the word price. There you go. By the way, when you do a search for forms, only type in one word. 
because if you try to type in what you think the form is actually called, it will not come up because we don't know what they actually call it. So let's add this in here as well. All right, so we're moving forward because this is DocuSign 1.5, right? Not 1.0, not 2.0, 1.5. All right, so we're gonna select everything. We're gonna move everything to the envelope. By the way, if you don't need a form, you can always delete a form out. Okay, so just people are, are always asking me that. You can delete a form. You can also, by the way, little action here. You can also, oh my goodness, why am I drawing a blank? Kirsten, I might have you help me. What do you want to do? Um, you want to make a folder? There he goes. Yeah. Yep. You can also organize. So I want to show this because we're in 1.5 right now. Right now I have a room with everything in there. But then what happens is you go and you start filling stuff out, then you send them to the buyer for the signature, and then they come back and your room has your original forms and your room has the signed forms and they're just forms all over this. It's like a big old mess of forms, okay? So what you can do to stay organized, you can go to actions, create add folder, and I'm gonna call this signed docs. I keep, I always make a folder like for the, like say listing agreement and I put all the listing agreement docs in there and then I'll, then the house is listed then when it goes under contract, I'll keep those in the room. Yeah, so you can have, if you're going, if you're going for a listing, you can have your main documents have listing agreement docs, sign listing, right, as a folder. So now what happens is when, oops. And then the ones that are in the middle that are going back and forth and back and forth, I only keep the final one and the medium ones mm. and archive rather than delete. So I still could get them in, should I need to, but I rarely. Yeah, so you can have multiple folders to organize your room, right? So you can have your main room, which is everything, but then once they're signed, you can move those signed forms to the, the signed doc folder, right? So it's nice and nice and clean. Right. The more organized you keep your rooms, your dot sign, the less um, the the faster you'll be able to move. Especially when it comes to I need to reset this, I need to upload it for compliance, um, negotiation period, right? Back and forth. A lot of times this gets a little the main room gets a little jumbled up. You also have different views, by the way, if you like that view better. I like seeing the forms personally. So you have different views as well you can change from. All right. So in the room, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to select all that's in the room. And up here, by the way, if you ever want to download, if you're ever like, how do I, I need to send something to myself, right? You can, I don't know why you would email to yourself, but you can. Some, sometimes you can't download. There's some forms that it will not let you download. And when that, when those come up, you have to email. I think like the federal lead paint form, I think, for whatever reason, will not let me download. Some of them won't. So sometimes if you check mark one form, you'll see this little download arrow. I selected all, which means there is a form in here that is not downloadable for whatever reason. So I do not have that. So if I needed to download a form to send as a to send to someone as an, in an um, like in my personal email, I can email it to myself. And then I'll have it to be able to attach my own email and send, right? Um, that's a great question. I have no idea which forms are downloadable, which are not. But now I'm curious. I kind of want to play with that. Yeah. Uh, if there's something we can change to fix that. Just so you know, uh, right now we are in change of our fill a business. So you do not need this form as of right now because we're waiting to get a new one with universal title. Um, this is something that we have to manually take out of the back end that we just haven't come to which I need to remind Doug to do. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and select all, but unselect this one because I don't need it. All right, let's go to envelope where we're designating who is signing it. So I'm just telling the system who's signing.
Yeah, I'm going to wait. It always takes longer when you're on Zoom. Doesn't take this long in DocuSign. It's just longer when you're on Zoom. Always fun. All right, this is really important and most agents skip this because we move too fast. So I need you to slow down just a minute and organize. When you send something, if you're working with a buyer and you're sending to the listing agent or vice versa, you wanna have it in a, in a certain order that makes sense for that other person. So let me ask all of you, what do you think should be the very first item in that packet that they see? Because it's going, going as one, it's going to be sent to them as one um, one document. Big one document. Contract of sale. Contract of sale. Exactly. So what you're able to do here is I'm able to go here. I'm going to click and just drag. Okay. So you can move any of these around in order that makes the most sense. As a newer agent, if you're on here or if you haven't submitted a lot of contracts, you're like, well, what goes first? If you're submitting for a buyer, you're always contract to sale goes first. Um, by the way, if you ever are like, wait a minute, I already had the sign and I'm not sending the buyer representation agreement to the listing agent because you do not send <laughs> this to the listing agent. Should not, many of them do. <laughs> no, I can't, I go through compliance every week and I can't tell you how many people include it. I'm like, no, that's personal Everybody between you and your buyer. So if you look at this, you're like, oh my God, whoops, I clicked it by mistake. I'm just going to delete that off of here. It still stays in your room. I just moved it out of the envelope. Also, if you're here and you're like, oh my God, I totally forgot to put in here the escalation clause, right? Or I forgot to put in here, like the listing agent sent you, uh, um, the disclosure disclaimer because they forgot to put on Brian Malas. You don't have to go all the way back to the room. You can just upload it right here. Any, by the way, if you have any questions, just stop me. If I'm going too fast, just stop me. Again, you can move things around. So I'm probably going to throw that there, right? Then you scroll down, and this is where you dot the I's, cross the T's. Double, double, triple check this. Who are the people receiving this? You should be one, your buyer should be one, you should be one, your seller should be one, whoever you're sending it to, right? Your investors. And please double check the email. We've had certain scenarios recently where agents keep saying, it's not working, it's not working, I'm getting an error message. And the error message was actually because they missed one letter in the email, right? The error message doesn't say the email is wrong. The error message is some weird thing that says won't send. And it all came back to, they put the wrong email in there because they, they went too fast, right? So just, this is where you're sitting there going, okay, do I have their legal name that shows on the social security card? So if their name is Robert, but they go by Bob, please make sure this says Robert, not Bob. If they are an LLC, this is where you would have um, this is where their name is on it because they are signing as a person. But in the details, it says uh, Shank Investment, Shank Properties, comma, LC, and then Shashank and your full name. And it would be must be a name. This must be a name to sign because that's a legal document. But in your details and on the contract itself, it will have in there the full LC, comma, person's name. I have a question here. So do we yeah. have to set the, that signing order? We have to check mark that? The top the oh, screen. so it will automatically show up in a signing order, but you can change it. Um, but you don't have to set this. And here's does why. It need to be marked? Does it need to be checked? No, no, automatically. Because, yeah, I'm asking because the agent, buyer agent is always the first one and then the, the buyer is the second. You know, like the, the first box. So if you set that signing order, then I will receive the email, this. and then I have to sign first, and the buyer will sign later. Um, so I will say this. Does it matter? Like who it, signs first? The only thing it, I was going to say is sometimes I mess up a contract, 
And so in some ways, I like it when the buyer's signing first, because then if they say, oh, wait a minute, blah, 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 then I haven't already signed it, and I can still change it. But if I've signed it, but I can't modify right. it, I have to redo it. Okay. Yeah, so it doesn't, it, it's kind of a per agent thing. Um, I have never reordered these. Usually I've just gone in and said, okay, let me send it. Let me go to my email as an agent, sign it. Kirsten's point, she goes in, she's like, let me send it to them, have them sign it. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll go in and sign it. Yeah, I think I would like that way, like they sign first. They sign for a, so, yep. Yeah. yep. Only and then you sign I've done, I've done it every once in a while, I mess up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and this yeah. way, I'm not redoing as much. Yeah. Just so you change the order. Or you just, yeah, you just drag it. Yeah, so you can click and drag. Now, the one thing you do want to do is when you send this to somebody for signature, um, and obviously, I know half of you know this already, so it's going to be a, a back to basic for, for a little bit. Um, Please don't just send it and then hope they're looking at their email waiting on you. Please send it and say, okay, number one, you do need two different emails. Send it and say, all right, hey, Kirsten, just, or text them, hey, just send it over for signature, take a look at it. What time can, can you get this done in the next hour? Set that urgency. Can you get this done in the next hour? By the way, I need you to go in first, sign yours, then have Shane go in right after you, sign his. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll be looking for this in the next hour, right? Really create that urgency. Because if you're just, I see a lot of agents right now who are just like, yep, click send. And then they're like waiting and waiting and waiting. It's like, do they even know you send it? Nobody's sitting on their emails. Communication is key. Scroll down, you have the message. This is what they get in an email. Now, obviously you're calling or texting them, but you probably want to change the subject line, make this a little more personal because you're dealing with people. That's up to you. Mine usually says um, for your signature and then the address. I'm sure Kirsten says something totally different. Some people just keep it as this, right? This one's a little, like I said, the subject line, even though you're calling and texting them, you can make it more personal. Okay, so I'm just going to delete this. Signature, one, two, three, straight. Maybe you enter a message, maybe you don't, totally up to you. All right, click next. All right, I'm gonna show you two things on the screen. One is I'm gonna show you, um, again, most of you have gone through this. So you have your buyers, you have you, you're all different, you know, the agents, yellow. Buyers, blue and purple. So this is your spot check screen. This is where you're truly scrolling down. You're saying, is everything in its right place? Did I forget something? Do I see all the initials? Do I see all the signatures? This is also where you want to make things required. Here's what happens. The system will automatically put, let me show an example here. Here we go. The system will automatically put initial boxes in anywhere that shows initial boxes. If you don't make something required here, what will happen is when it goes off to your client, they're going to have to look and it, they're going to have to read and choose and think about things. So who's a professional? Them or us? Us. So you do not want your client sitting there going through and being like, well, wait a minute. Which one do I sign? You, you don't want it to be confusing for them. So let's say the inspection is attached. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete, which by the way, all I'm doing is I'm clicking and hitting the delete button on my keyboard. And then I'm going to highlight right here required. Okay. Again, this is where you're gonna go through each and every document to specify what's required, what can I delete? Any questions on that part? No, yes, maybe. Again, making each and every one of these required, okay? This is why if you already know you're working with somebody and you're going to be showing houses, you're going to have that listing appointment right after they're done renovations, 
if you get, you can literally get everything prepped. And then all you have to do is go in there and put in an address or put in a price or put in AMD. There's, you can prep 90% of everything, right? And then all you're doing is you're adding just a few little things at the end for faster sending. All right, now what I wanna do is I wanna find the PDF document. I think is, actually, you know what? I'm gonna go back. All right, by the way, if I hit send, that goes to your client now. Over here, you have a lot of different functions that you can do. So if, let's say for example, um, here we go. Let's actually go back to the contract to sale. Of course, nothing's holding because I didn't type anything in here yet. By the way, you fill out the contract, not in the screen. You fill it out in the room. It makes it so much easier. If you wait to fill out in here, I've had a lot of agents recently, take it to the envelope and then they're filling everything out here manually. And they're like, why is this taking me two hours to do a contract, three hours to do a contract? And it's because you're, you're filling everything in individually, one by one scrolling down, which is exhausting as opposed to in a room, you fill out the details, it will auto-populate like 80% of everything. 80%, not 100%. And then in the room, all the documents get filled out before moving it to an envelope. It will save you so much time. And then in here, you're just doing spot chunks. You need to change something, delete something, add something. And what I want to do right now is I want to demonstrate actually a signed document or PDF document that we're going to pretend is signed and how do we manipulate it. I'm gonna actually log out, log back in just for ease of myself. Questions for me? Yes. So um, when I go home and practice, um, do I start from command or down the side? Command. So when you go and practice, and what we can do is um, if you go on to the website kwlresources.com, there is a whole DocuSign tutorial in there on how to bring something from docu from command to DocuSign. Okay. Um, so what you want to do to practice is today go in and enter yourself as a contact and command. Put yourself as an opportunity in command. And then you'll start that room for yourself as if you are that buyer. Okay. Right? Or seller, whichever we want to be today. I always recommend starting with buyer and then you can practice as a seller. All right. So I'm going to go in. I'm going to go here and take the PDF document. Oops, some on Rocky Sun. There we go. So I'm going to say that this right here, I'm just going to bring the PDF to it to the envelope to show you how we can cross things out, add initials, um, write over things. Again, we can manipulate the document that's already signed. So again, we have the document, we have the recipients. So I'm just gonna bring it over to the next room. Oops. Someone in there. By the way, if you ever get to the screen and it's saying who are the recipients and it's not coming up, you can add them. I'm just going to add like 20 million emails here. So I'm just going to add all of them. It's always really important on that previous screen to have recipients. If you do not, then this screen will not have auto-populated any initials or signatures for you. 
Okay. Now in a PDF document, it will not auto-populate because it doesn't know. The system can't read a PDF and say, where are the initial and signature spots? So in a PDF document, we have to manually do things. So let's say, for example, that uh, we had this all filled out. I sent it to Fred Flintstone. Okay. And then Fred all of a sudden got back to me and was like, oh, you know what? My legal name is Frederick. Frederick. <laughs> now, I could go back to the room, take all the, to do the details and make all the documents clean with Frederick, move that to, to the uh, folder again for new signatures. But to be honest, if it was a name, a name change like that, I would probably want, because I now have to change every document. So I would probably go back to the room, change everything, two cents per signature, so I have very clean documents sent to the listing agent. If it is a one-off thing, like let's say for example, let's see if I have a price on here. What's your price on this one? Oh, I'm on the uh, right side here. So let's say for example, um, the list price. So we had everything, went over Frederick, or sorry, Fred, and we already had the meeting, blah, blah, blah. But now we're talking and he's like, wait, wait, hold on. Before we publish this, um, I really need this, not that someone's gonna say this, but I'm totally gonna go on with this. I really need this sold faster. My job starts. That happened to me exactly. That exact example happened to me oh, just a couple weeks ago. Perfect. I need this sold fast. My job starts soon. I need to move. Um, can we change the price to three forty eight? What you're able to do here, and there's two ways to do it. So I'm going to do the way that I know, but then I'm going to look at Kirsten and see if she does somewhere different. Oh, I think you did exactly what I did. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to go to the line. You're going to cross that baby out there. Right. And I'm going to go text box. There's another way I don't know it. This is exactly what I did. And in the text box, 348. Okay. Now, because you cross something out, what now needs to happen? Initials. Initials. Okay, so if that is the only change to this document, what I'm then going to do is over here where it says initial. I'm gonna go ahead and drop an initial box. Now, me personally, I'm a little OCD sometimes, so I am going to do this. Now, if there's two buyers, I'm going to pretend like both of these are buyers right now. They both have to initial. Okay. So now I cross it out. I put a text box, the new price, the initials. Now I can send it, be like, go ahead and sign that. So again, the way I got there, let me just do that one more time. So let's find uh, something else. Let's say that I need to extend it out for whatever reason. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to cross a line through it. I'll then throw the text box in here. And I'll say 12, 31, 20, 23. And because I did a line, a line always means you need by the way, some people will um what was word was word? Some people will Uh, shrink the initial boxes and make them fit. Other people are like, nope, initials, whatever. Again, I'm a little OCD, which is why I like it. Like, okay, let me actually see the words and put it between there. Questions on line through something, adding a text box, putting initials? No? Everybody good with that? Cool. 
So you have, just to show you a few other things, you have a whole tool section, right? So you have check boxes, radio buttons, um, I don't know when you would need this, but you can draw things. I've never used that, but it exists. You can also, let's say you're on the screen and you're like, oh my God, I totally it for another form. Instead of going back, back and back again, you can click on this little document setting button. I can edit this and bring in another form right here. So a lot of times we think we have to go all the way back to the room. Or usually in that screen, there are add buttons. And then obviously if I click send, it comes to me. Questions? Was that a 1.5 for you? Yeah. Okay. I said, we're not DocuSign 2.0, that will be the next DocuSign class. Today was DocuSign 1.5, where we talked more about um, these, these little add-ons that we can do. By the way, there is also a way, once you have the whole document, there is a way to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, when you submit for compliance, there's actually a way to break out your document. If you, you can upload the whole signed document for compliance. There's also a way to actually separate the document out and put them in its respective it spots. Right. Yes, I do. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. It makes compliance a lot faster for us, mm -hmm. but um, it also makes things organized. Like if you just like being organized, like if you're like, I want, like, did I miss something? That also helps you make sure you didn't miss anything. Okay, so that was a really quick 45 second, 45 seconds. Wow, that will be a fast DocuSign class. 45 minute DocuSign. Um, next session will be, again, DocuSign 2.0, which if you have not practiced, have not built any buyers and sellers things out with forums and send, by the way, when you practice, Send them to yourself, sign them, go back in. What does that look like, right? How does it come across? How does the buyer see it? How does the seller see it? As an agent, we should know what everything looks like. So if a buyer says to you, hey, I'm looking at the screen, you should be able to say, oh, I know exactly where you are. Okay. The more you practice, the faster you'll be able to write a contract. Back in the day, it took me about three-ish hours to put a contract together. No lie, last year I was helping the agent while driving to North Carolina on vacation. And the agent had to put a contract together and um, was in a, uh, coming from another brokerage and didn't have things set up yet. So I stopped at Starbucks in whatever state I was in at that time. Hopped out, got my laptop, got the information from her, took about... 15, 20 minutes at most to put it together or send the buyer. The only difference between three hours and 15 minutes is practice. I literally have over 30 some practice rooms now. To this day, I still get in there and practice. It says if you don't continue, you will lose the muscle memory. It's not like riding a bike. Mm -hmm. All right, questions. So what's everybody gonna do? Cool. <laughs> All right, again, if you need resources, kwlresources.com has a whole lot of videos, tutorials, trainings, great, great things on there for all the rest of the time. Bye everyone. <laughs>